level, fairly level fight until Spence took over. So, I mean, it, it was an even, fairly evenly matched fight, obviously. Hindsight, it weren't because he was still probably recovering from the, the psychologically from the Golovkin beat down. But yeah, it's um, it's, it's yeah. Look at it, and I'm sure it'll come out sooner or later, wouldn't it? I'm sure the it'll be telling tales about what's going on behind the scenes. Listen, let me tell you this, right? Do you know once Kel Brook's done, he's going to blow the lid off boxing, mate. He's going to blow the lid yeah. off boxing when he's done. But at the yeah. moment, nobody's saying that because it's like, they all want to get on Sky. They all want to get to Eddie Earn. All roads lead to Eddie Earn, so nobody dare say fuck all. There, you've got all these little gimps around Doncaster who think they're big boxing men, right? Let me tell you this. They all slag Eddie Earn off to fuck. Right, they all, they know what's going on, but they're not going to say a word. They're not going to say a word. But when Eddie's gone out boxing, or when Kel's gone, they'll all they'll, they'll, they'll all they'll all say something. Then Kel will say something when he retires, or if Eddie retires, they'll all come out at woodwork. But nobody's going to say for call at the moment because they all want to be mates with Eddie. I don't want to be mates with him. I spit in his face if I see that cunt. No messing about. Then he always says to me, oh, if ever he turned up at one of our shows, if we went to one of his, would you cause trouble? I said, if he come to him out and shake his fucking hand, would I fuck? Well, what he's done to boxing, would I fuck? Look what he's done to Kel Brook. These people are ruthless. They were going to put you bank in with fucking Golovkin. What do you think would have happened to him at that level? They were only British level. They got torn into our arsehole. Look, fighters, right? Need saving from themselves, don't they? You know when you see a fighter come out with something like... I can explain it. What did Dave Allen say? Dave Allen said he would... Fight so, uh, Wilder for X amount of money or... Uh, uh, other fighters, like... I've heard Isaac Lowe say he'd fight uh, Wilder for right money and all that. Fighters are fighters, they'll fight anybody. But let's have it right. You know when people are getting flogged... It's not nice to see. You know, Frotch, when he was getting flogged by George Groves, I was sat ringside behind Andy Lee and Huey Fury, right, with my girlfriend. And I was, like, dumbstruck. When Frotch got dropped, I was, everybody stood up and went, <gasps> you got 20,000 people going, <gasps> like that. It was just shocked. And then for six rounds, he got flogged. And that was fucking breaking my heart, mate. But after the sixth round, I said, oh, he'll step on gas now. But I weren't sure. And he did. He stepped on the gas and he hit George Groves with 17 unanswered punches. And let me tell you this, all you fucking gimps from Gimpville Island. George Groves were held in hospital with a fucking concussion. But Eddie Hearn didn't want nobody to know about that, did he? Howard Foster told me that and it'll be in his fucking book. But he can't say anything now, can he, Howard? Because he's still board, board licensed. They can't speak to media, can they? They're not allowed to. It's in the contract. But let me tell you this. George Groves had a fucking concussion, so Howard Foster saved his fucking life, let me tell you, because we all know Carl Frotch finishes like a steam train, don't we? Do you know what I mean? He saved his life, and you saw what happened in the in the rematch, when he left him we, we folded in half like a deck chair, with his leg underneath his bum, he left him like Bambi, didn't he? So can you imagine them punches coming at you when you can't defend yourself? I mean... People went there that night for blood, mate. They went there for blood. Just like the Ben Mc the, the Ben McClellan fight, right? I watched that in prison. And I've been told of people that there the, the were there were there were menace in the air that night. Well let me tell you this in Manchester. That atmosphere that night, it were on it were on your hairs were stood up on back of your ar arms. It were like Frotch Pascal and frotch boote people went there fans know when there's violence in the air don't they right they know when there's a proper proper fight and we don't get many of them doing that people knew we there were violence eh we really get none these days none we get knackers and shit because they're ready earn and frank to a certain extent fucking dragging it out and dragging it out well let me tell you this Every now and then you get a fight and you all go fucking get ready and you all know and you and, and it's packed because everybody knows it's a great fight because you know that your guy's going to be in one where you just can't pick a winner but we don't get en enough of that. The Bar Joyce were one of them fights and that's why I'm good it's not happening but like I said that night with Frotch Groves there were violence in the air mate, extreme violence. 
and that's why it'll go down as a classic. Ben Eubank, that weren't the same, the first one. There were violence in the air, mate. They just went at it like cat and dog, didn't they? And just like two alley cats. Sometimes two fighters, they gel, don't they? Ben Eubank, Frotch Groves, you know. Fight, but how many more fight Ward Gatti, but how many more fights do we get like that? We can't name them, can we? We can't name ten, can we? Or maybe we could if we went on box wreck. Ali Fraser. Frotch Kessler, there were violence in the air when them two fought. They went at it, mate. You know, it, it, I can explain it. The, the, it's what we want, but we don't want to see anybody get hurt. The main thing is the boxers get home safe to their families, isn't it? But we don't want anybody hurt, but we don't want anybody abused. There's too many fighters being abused, in my opinion. There's, do you know what I mean? I'm putting, putting fights they can't win. Did you see that fight with Anthony Fowler and that kid who couldn't stand up a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, I'll see that. How's that kid got a fucking licence to fight? How, how did that happen? Not fought with five years, lass. Is that way, how long it were? Some, something like that, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Stuff like that gets on my fucking wick. Get some of my weak mate stuff like that, but you know it's uh, that's boxing for you, isn't it, mate? It's uh, it lets itself down. Times, isn't it? Hey, it's a disgusting sport at times. Disgusting! Oh my god, unbelievable! But people, it's what the fans want, isn't it? They want to see blood spilt, don't they? But we don't want to see anybody's brains scrambled, do we? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I want to see fighters get paid, but I don't want to see... I don't want to see Tyson Fury and Joshua turn around and say, hey, 30 million each is no good at Wembley for us. We want 50 million each at Saudi. Well, that to me, there's a line that you don't cross. Fans are being took for cunts if they do that, being mugged off. I mean, how many people are going to really fly to Saudi? I mean... <laughs> well, you're going to get all them people with money who will go... Who can afford five grand to go to Saudi? Because that's what they're saying it'll cost. It were three grand for three three thousand three hundred, wasn't it? For the cheapest ticket and and a flight package for Joshua Ruiz. So maybe maybe it's right. Maybe it will be four or five grand for the Joshua Fury in Saudi. But can people stump up that up, stump that up? I mean, if you've got how many people went to the Ruiz fight? Were it twenty thousand? Fifteen, but they, they weren't. It was all it was expats coming in. For, it was people from everywhere. Well, tw twenty thousand times five thousand quid. How much is that for economy? Say that again. Twenty. Twenty thousand people times five thousand people. What's that? Hundred million or is it a, a billion? I don't know. What, five. Five. Uh, twenty thousand on. Times five, uh, times five thousand, well, 25, 25 thousand. Well, 20 times five quid, right, is 100 grand. Times it by 50, it's a million. Times it by 500, it's 10 million. Times it by 5,000, it's 100 million. So you've got 100 million just from fucking gates and, all, and pack, flight packages and all that shared out amongst airlines hotels and, and, and promoter right so there's 100 million in pot there then you've got an estimated 5 million buys and they're talking 30 quid aren't they so 5 million times 30 quid just for the tv money in england that's 150 million so you've got a quarter of a billion there right and then you've got 137 other countries aren't you with with their money coming into pot so, so you could end up with something like 400, 500 million in the, in the pot. So I can see why they want to go to Saudi. But what, what, what about all the British fans? Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua are from Britain and they are multi fly swimming in fucking Cho Chai. So why would they want to go to Saudi? It would be a fingers up to everybody, wouldn't it? Yeah, especially Joshua when there's uh, when they're talking about doing fights for UK fans and oh, let's do it all for the yeah, for fans, fans, Eddie, for fans. No, for Joshua. That's what they mean for Joshua. Yeah, so it's it's, <coughs> it's gonna. Oh, you know what? I can't see it happening here, 
asking you. No, I can't afford because they're, they're, they're motivated by greed, aren't they? Tyson's very greedy. Joshua's even greedier. They're greedy. Frank Warren's greedy. Eddie Hearn's greedy. They're surrounded by greed. You know greed, right? You know when I first started with Dennis? Five years ago. Uh, April 12th, five years ago. 2015, Sam Sheedy fought a guy. 12-12 and 2, I forgot his name. Let me tell you this. Dennis said to me that night, do you know greed? It reaches into people's core. So does it then? He goes, yeah. It reaches into people's core. He says, I'm going to give you a chance, but if you ever fuck me, and he give me this look, so I know what he meant. But the point I'm trying to make is, greed reaches into people's cores. So, what people have to do is not be so fucking damn greedy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But that's just... I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, though. They could put that, they could put it, they put that fight on over here at two o'clock in the morning in an arena. And I know it's a stadium fight over here, but they could put that on in pay-per-view over in the US and get that pay-per-view money in. That would earn a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, the one. Views, yeah, it's, it's another logical outlet, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think we'd stay up to two, two o'clock in the morning. They they go mad on the tickets, saying that man, even up in the gods would be a lot of money, which you know they're going to be greedy on the gate. Yeah, but I wouldn't be surprised if they done that. Yeah, yeah, I want myself, mate. I want myself. Especially but... if uh, Tyson Fury's still with ESPN and he's still got a contract with them. If Tyson Fury fights Anthony Joshua, he's going to want to be a matchroom fighter. So he doesn't have to share as much money out. He'll want to be with matchroom and that's what probably will happen. He'll be with matchroom when he fights Joshua and Eddie Earn will want to control the whole show then. There'll be none of this split BT and Sky Sports and dual pay-per-view. It'll be Tyson Fury, Sky Sports fighter, matchroom fighter, if he fights Joshua. Then they've got full control, haven't they then? Yeah. They won't want to go to the negotiating table. We all fish eyes there, will they? Doing the shoulder roll with dint in his forehead and all that. There'll be none of that. Not if they can help it. No, they'll want. They'll bide it. They'll drag it out and drag it out and tease us like they did Floyd Mayweather against Manny Pacquiao. That's what I think. But you know, it's it's just boxing, isn't it? It's. Uh, it's a sport unlike any other. It's the only sport where somebody turns around and says, you know what, I don't want to fight him. I'll fight him instead. And that's it. Oh, I want to fight him. Can you pump him up rankings? That's it. Could you imagine doing that with fucking Premier League? Oh, we don't want to play Newcastle today. We'll play Watford. No. Hey, what the fuck? Hey? And you've got people, right? Hey? I think the TV have got to do a lot more. They've got to do a lot. They've got to change it and alter it. They've got to come to the table now, the TV people, and say, let's have a good look at ourselves, what we're doing here with this sport, because arenas are not getting sold out. We've got to do the same. Dennis has, Dennis has got to start selling out Ponds Ford, for starters. He needs to sign some fighters, in my opinion. Get some people signed. Let's see some new signings. Do you know what I mean? That's what I want to see. But we've got to do more. We've got to do more. But fighters have got to start promoting themselves better and sell tickets instead of sat there with hand out all the time. But these ticket deals have got to stop as well. Where, and another thing that's got to stop as well. You've got people who can be funny on social media and they're getting more chances than people who've been at GB team. It's all fucked up. It's rooted with rotten apples from the top to the bottom. Rotten apples. And hangers on. Uh, if you look at the uh, opportunities they've had and that they Barron's had compared to fighters that are ten times more talented than him, that just goes to show you. That just goes to emphasise your point. Yeah, but no. Dave gets it, doesn't he? With his PR, doesn't he? But he just doesn't like going to gym. Yeah, he does. He does. But he does. But other fighters who and maybe that some fighters need put some fighters need pushing. Some fighters need to do more. Do you know what I mean? The other yeah. Works. Everywhere around the board, everyone can just do a little bit more. But the TV, the, t the TV now who are paying people like uh, people, people like behind Sky now have got to start saying, look, and just start saying when fights are proposed to, they say like, nah, we want better. You got, you got to do better. Yeah, 
Yeah. You know, instead of getting fed this, because I can't remember the last time I sat in and watched a Saturday night fight night, and I was genuinely looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's wrong, isn't it, really? Yeah, it's... Uh, there's people getting chances who maybe don't deserve it, but then again, David maybe deserves a few chances, because let's have it right. He was taking fights against guys he shouldn't have been in with earlier in his career. Now, Dennis wouldn't have let, let that happen. When Dennis had him, he left at 6-0 and on a draw. Three fights later or something, he was fighting Luis Ortiz, wasn't he? He's not disciplined enough, is he? He's tough, but he's not disciplined enough. But he might get a British title if he's matched correctly, and then David will be happy with that. He'll retire a happy man that with that. So I'll be pleased for him. Yeah, but, uh, well, yeah, but once the Brahm and the Bra say the Brahm moves on and he gives up the British, he's going to have to fight someone like Gorman or something like that. David, someone. Dave, yeah, Dave against Gorman is a good fight. Good tech. Dave against Tom Little's an headliner, in my opinion. Headline what? Headline at your call, Dave Allen, Tom Little, once and for all. <laughs> Is that it? Should, it, it but, but honestly, yes, does Dave Allen versus Tom Little, does that headline a Saturday night fight night? Well, that's what, Ed Robin, yeah. that's what Ed Robinson at Sky's telling people. No, not for me. I know, but I'm just saying they'll put it on, though, won't they? If they can put Terry Harper and Natasha Jonas on. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a good point. But they're trying to, they're trying to uh, they're trying to put a next gen tag to that, didn't they? So it's not what? What to Natasha Jonas? At, Natasha Jonas is 35. I didn't realise she was that old. So how could that be a next fucking gen? She's old enough to be my mother. <laughs> She's not young enough to be my daughter, but do you know what I mean? But uh, but no, nah, next gen, fucking hell, man, next gen. They had Stewie Hall on the next gen show. He's fucking fifty nine, isn't he? Yeah. You fucking no good cunt, Stewie Hall. Do you know what I mean? It's a part. These fighters should be indoors in their apartment slippers on. Then sort of ages at their sort of ways, whilst not not getting turned out. Just. You know what I mean? Just as cannon fodder. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you, mate. I agree with you. But we move on, so. Right, I'm going to go take my dog over Crook Hill Golf Club and let it shit on the fucking 18th hole with all them rich Russ. bastards play. Good to, Russ, good to speak to you, mate. Yeah, it'd be great to speak to you. Take care. Uh, Social distancing. Social distancing's the secret. Keep in touch and we'll do something next week. Is that alright? You take care, Mark. Yeah, we'll best take you. Cheers, mate. Bye bye. Right. Right. That was uh, my pal. Oh, I'll show you what Dennis says. He's a pal of mine, big fucking pal of mine. Well, that was my pal, uh, Matt Skelton from London, London cabbie that's not going to be working for a bit, bless him, but he's a good boxing man. He. Uh, he sends me some good ideas and I always pick people's brains like him and Terry, Ozzy, Smido. Uh, I listen to that Boxing Asylum. That's a good uh, a good asylum. I'm still waiting for my T-shirt from Stephen Wellens. But uh, I pick all the brains. Rico, people like that. Mick Whale, Glyn Rhodes. Chris Smedley when he picks his fucking phone up. Boxing is a sport like no other in the world. It's the only sport that fucking frustrates us, makes us angry, gets us at it. But every now and then you see a fight, you know, and you think, wow. Now, if you want to see a good fight, go on my channel and watch one of the fights that's on at the last Mick Wales show. I put a fight on. Uh, I, sorry, I put a fight. Sorry, I filmed the fight, and it's a young kid called Johnson. And these kids went L for leather. Now that fight, I went there pissed off and fed up with boxing. I come away from that fight, amateur show, and my faith were restored in boxing. 
And then you see Josh Whale dismantle Felix Williams, 28 and 0. Top, top fighter. You see Josh Whale dismantle him and he, he come to win him. He was a proper top kid. And Josh won an IBO international belt. Fights like that can restore your faith in the sport. And I don't know what fights are going to restore my faith that's coming up lately. The Bar Joyce, I was excited about that. That was a hardcore wet dream. But Fitzy against Fowler. Now Fitzy against Cheeseman rematch. Yeah, that excites me. Well, there aren't many others. Tyson Fury, Joshua. Yeah, but in Saudi, I'd be devastated. I'd hammer that fight on my channel. I'd hammer it to death. I'd hammer the greed. That's the type of guy I am. I don't like greedy people. But I would hammer it for being in Saudi. But if it were in England, I'd be there, wouldn't I? In rafters on an 100 quid ticket. <laughs> so, that's about it, really. So, keep supporting boxing. Shout out to all them people that are backing me. And Robin Reed Multivitamins. Keep them vitamins coming, Robin. You keep them coming and I'll keep popping them. I wish there were sleeping tablets though, because I've been up a fucking half a week. So that's about it. Sorry for swearing, but I don't give a fuck. But like I said, who cares?